Hello and welcome to Walking with Rob. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just doing a bit of training. So starting off by doing a 30 mile walk in Staffordshire. So what I'll be doing is heading along the canal, which I'm currently on at the moment. Sun's not long come up. And this is all in training for Spain, which is coming up at the end of this month, um, where I'm going to be doing multiple days of 30 miles plus. So I need to really get the training in now, get stuck into it and just make sure that I'm fully fit and ready to go. So the weather's not actually been that bad in the last couple of weeks. So path's looking pretty clear. It's not going to be uh, as dry as obviously when I'm over in Spain. Still, it's, uh, it's all good training. So I'll show you on this side now where I'm about to be heading. So I've currently, I've done around about three miles to get to where I'm at at the moment <clears throat> from where I live. So you can see on here, we got Nantwich, 22 miles that way. And then you got Orthley. So in between here and Nantwich is Market Drayton and that's where I'm heading today. So once I get to the next uh, marker point that shows how far we are from Market Drayton, I'll recut the video in then. First little mud pile that we've come across. It's gonna be a few of these today where it's a little bit trickier. I mean, the shoes that I've got on, pretty good but I mean obviously they're not ideal I can already feel my sock getting a little bit wet which is obviously a little bit concerning I do have a spare pair but I always save them for the halfway point so I'll most likely put those on when I get to market Drayton um, you know the only problem with that is it's, it just massively increases my chance of getting a blister uh, if I let my feet get wet stay wet for too long while I'm walking and the rubbing it's just going to create blisters so i've just got to be uh just got to be cautious of that really don't know what that is leaking out onto the canal but it's not nice is it looks like an oil spill a nice place to stop wouldn't it So we still haven't come to a marker at this point, which is showing how many miles we've got until we get to Market Drayton. It's a pretty cool little bridge. <clears throat> It's pretty cool, there's a little shepherd's up there. So you've got a few moorings here for the canal barges. Don't think anyone's in them though, because it's the farthest way. heron up here so he's gonna fly off as soon as he sees me hopefully we'll get it on video
kan So waiting for the uh, daily feed from the boat sold us through. So as I mentioned at the beginning, obviously this is preparation for my trip to Spain. The scenery in Spain is going to be Little bit of a little bit different to this um, so my plan is I fly into Malaga airport and I use no transportation apart from my legs uh, until I get to Almeria um, so I've got two nights in Malaga um, and then I'll be setting off from there um, staying at a different town every day some days a little bit easier than others so some days it's kind of 12 to 15 miles um, but then I have got some pretty heavy days where it will be 30 to 40 miles. Um, and that's kind of the starting from about day two, day three. That's where it really starts to pick up and get a little bit, diff little bit more difficult. Obviously, I've got the motivation of the sun. It does help. It does help quite a bit to kind of get you out of bed in the morning. Um, so my plan is, because obviously it's still winter, the sun's still only out for around about nine hours in Spain. So my plan will be to set off before the sun comes up, so set off around about 6am in the morning every day. Um, yeah, it should, should work out pretty well. Set off about 6, it means I can have plenty of little breaks along the way. Because, uh, you know, I want it to be a challenge, but I also want to enjoy it as well be able to take it in so yeah this boat's pretty cool bare necessities this grey one's pretty cool it's like stealth They've had a bad time, doesn't they? These two. Oh dear. Couple of horses, few sheep. Do love living in the countryside. Nostrum. 
fridge over there. So I think over here is some sort of workshop. We've got like a little crane there to uh, lift the barges up to be able to do uh, maintenance work and such. It's pretty cool. So we're coming up to another signpost here. So we'll see. This one's going to give us any more information. Yeah, so it's still showing Nantwich on there. six miles down the canal so around about seven or eight miles in total <clears throat> Getting there, slowly but surely. It's got to a little bit of a checkpoint here. Nice bench, so I think sit down, have a drink for five minutes, ten minutes maybe. Have a nice little relax. We'll get back on the road. This boat coming down is the first one that I've actually seen the whole the whole walk. I'd like to say at this point I think we're around about halfway to Market Drayton. It's about halfway there, so about a quarter of the trip's done because I'm doing a round trip um, all in one day. So heading to Market Drayton, be there for around about lunchtime. Grab some lunch time, grab some lunch from the shop, um, and then head back. So. Hopefully I'm back before sundown. Sun's due to set around about just before five o'clock. So I should be back by then, hopefully. Path's starting to get quite boggy now. It's 
it's not the best. Almost just slipped over, which wouldn't be great, but uh, as long as I don't injure myself, it doesn't really matter too much. So this is pretty cool. So you can see on both sides, we've got a rock wall. So, I mean, fair play to them. You know, you think these were built two, 300 years ago. They would have had to have dug through all of that stone and then obviously still further down to get to the bottom of the canal bed. It's pretty impressive, isn't it, when you think about it? <clears throat> I mean, looking at the height of the ridge up there, you know, you can imagine how how much digging that would have took to have dig this big opening out for the canal. I mean, you can see by the height of that bridge coming up there, that's where the land would have laid flat. <clears throat> Credit where credit's due, you know. Absolute grafters, aren't they, getting that done? This helicopter keeps flying over me. Don't know what I've done wrong today, but I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll find some something. <laughs> so come up to another sign here. Let's see uh, how our progress is. So just to recap, I started by Norbury Junction is where I come onto the canal, and I'm a couple of miles from there. So eight and a half miles from Norbury. Nant, which is 15 miles away so yeah got probably another six six miles seven miles something like that until we uh get to morrison's in market drayton for a spot of lunch i'm actually getting quite hungry now i haven't bought any food with me because i'm intermittent fasting as i normally do so i normally don't eat until around about 12 one o'clock so it should work out quite well i should be there for around about 12 half 12 something like that it almost looks like something you'd find in the aztec or something it's still that bloody police helicopter i mean we are kind of in the middle of nowhere so they must be doing some sort of training exercise or something because I highly doubt that they're uh, pursuing a suspect or anything around here. Super cool though, yeah. So, like I mentioned earlier, I knew the path was going to start getting a little bit more gnarly, but I just went through a section. And as you can see, I mean, these are breathable shoes, so it lets lets things inside so I'm in trouble now I mean <laughs> my socks are absolutely soaked inside I've got a spare pair but they're for the halfway point there for when I get to um, to market Drayton so it's a little bit of a pickle and I also know that on the way back I'm gonna have to go for all this bog again so it just means I'm gonna have to walk the vast majority of the way back with with wet socks which is them putting me in, in danger of, of blisters and whatever else so oh, I've got that to look forward to uh, so I'm just trying to work out tactically what I'm going to do I'm thinking should I try and maybe dry the pair of socks that I've got on when I get to market Drayton but I think uh, I might be fighting a losing battle there as it's only about seven degrees so the chance of drying out is, is probably quite unlikely so yeah, it's all fun. It's all fun and games. Once again, it's it's a problem that I'm not going to really have to deal with when I'm in Spain. The only issue I'll have there is, obviously, you know, if, if I, my feet are sweating. Um, but 
the socks will dry out very very quickly you know if i pop to the beach for half an hour take my socks off by the time i've had a little swim or you know had a little chill on the beach by the time i've done that and i've come back out they'll be dry again so it's not as big of an issue but as i say hopefully i don't cause too many issues for myself <clears throat> But yeah the path's starting to clear up a little bit now so hopefully it's not too bad on this section finally got a bit of sun out the only problem is the direction i'm heading in it looks quite dark so it looks like we might be in for a little spot of rain this afternoon which doesn't fill me with joy if i'm honest with you Like this boat's giving up on life to be honest, I think he's half sunk. So from what I can see, coming up, this is the first set of locks that I've actually come across, which is quite surprising really, seeing as how far we've travelled so far. So I'll update when we get there. So we're at Tiley Wharf. So this is the first set of locks that we've actually come across on this trip. Sure, any uh, any English people watching will know exactly what these are. For any Americans or European, well, yeah, Europeans will know what they are as well. But it's quite an ingenious system, actually. So, it's how to bring a boat that's currently sitting at this level, how to bring them down to that level, because obviously water isn't going to travel at an angle. So they go into the chamber in the middle there. The chamber in the middle is then filled up with water. And then the water is then released into this bit. And they're then currently sitting at that level. Which if on the trip I do see one being done, I'll record it, but I highly doubt I will because I've only seen one, I think one, maybe two um, barges the whole walk. So I think it's unlikely we're gonna see any. It's more of a it's more of a summer endeavour, isn't it? Going uh, going along in a canal barge. That's pretty cool. So we've got another set of locks coming up. So I think there's a couple in this section. So I'll film that and get a little bit closer. So you can see this one's filled up to the top. So a boat would be able to come straight in there. So all you'd do is just pull this back, pull this back, look, it opens it up. And then the boat can go straight in then. I'll push it back so it's uh, closed. So you see the boat come into here. And then once the boat's in here, you then start releasing water slowly out of that end into that part of the canal. And then the boat will just slowly start to lower down, lower down, lower down. And then you open up these gates, the boat can go straight out and then onto the next one. So as I say, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feature. It's 
going to capture this tree as well, it's pretty cool man. It's kind of built into the rocks. I don't know if it's rocks, it's just clay. So we're not far now, I think we're probably maybe three miles away I'd say, something like that. Definitely starting to get a bit peckish now. But it just makes just makes it that little bit sweeter when you do find leaves, doesn't it? Oh, we're almost there now, almost there. So I've got about another half a mile to go up the canal because um, where I'm stopping off for lunch when I go to Morrison's, it is the other side of the town. So I'm just going to crack on up here and then I go down a couple of boring residential streets and then I'm there. Oh. I've earned my break today. This is pretty cool. So I've been into Morrison's, just popping down now, there's a bench just before that bridge there where I'm going to stop for a, stop for a little bite of lunch. Right, all full up, just had my lunch, it's time for me to start trekking back so see, just leaving Market Drayton now. the ducks. I've got a little bit of bread for the ducks on the way back so hopefully we find some nice nice little group of ducks, maybe some baby ones, give them a little feed. So yeah, time, time, to, time to start back. Got a nice little group here but I think I can find a better bunch. Feed. Hopefully, you have the fresh Morrison's roll that I've got left over. Interested, are they? So, 
now this is where these are going to start really coming into play so ten and a half miles to Norbury Junction so I'm pretty much getting off just before Norbury Junction and then I've got another couple of miles back to my house from the canal so about 12 and a half miles until I'm home hopefully should be back before the sun goes down but it's going to be close it's going to be real close we'll see. As I say, weather's still holding up for now, it's a couple of dark times, but hopefully it should be all good. Mr Stumpy smoking his pipe. <laughs> Brilliant. We're just coming down to that lock system again. So a bit of uphill coming up, but nothing too crazy. Well, definitely back to the boggy part of the trip. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not fun at all, but it is part of it. So, <clears throat> I mean, unfortunately, these shoes aren't waterproof, so it does make it a little bit more difficult. But I've got to break them in because these are going to be what I'm wearing on the Spain trip. Um, so it just it makes sense, and obviously. When I'm over in Spain, it's, uh, it's a lot drier climate, so it shouldn't really be encountering as much water. So we've got another big section of mud coming up as well. So there's a few on this trail, but kind of, you've got to take the rough of the smooth. That's the way it goes. So uh, hopefully I can make it through here in one piece. Let's slip into the canal or something. <clears throat> Luckily, my other pair of socks are now dry, so I can stick them on once I get to the uh, the next bench. Oh dear! Oops, so they are officially soaking. Brilliant. <laughs> Eight and a half miles to Norbury Junction. We're getting there. Last little section of the boggy part now. And then when I next come to a bench, I'll change my socks up because they are soaking. Oh, thank God for that. Heron, geese, ducks. Well, by sanctuary, there's a little stream running through the middle of it. Lovely. 
seven and a half miles. Easy. Coming up to our next marker. I'm not too sure what it's going to say, to be honest. A bit there. Uh, a bit lost on where I'm up to. Okay, five and a half miles until Norbury Junction. Yep, five and a half. So we're on the home straight now. Probably, uh, say another three miles to Norbury Junction. Obviously I'm getting off just before Norbury to head up to my village. Uh, but yeah, so on the home straight now. We'll see what this sign's saying. And um, we should be able to calculate it off the back of that, how far we've got left. But the weather's held up, it's been a good day. Legs are hurting a little bit, but I'm sure it's nothing a nice hot bath can't fix. Let's see where we're up to with this sign then. Four and a half miles. Okay, that's not too bad. So back to the uh, crane section. Right, let's see where we're up to now. Three and a half miles. Light work, eh? Back in no time, a bit of supper. Couple of miles to go. Police are still following me. Been out all bloody day. Can't avoid it. ones were hiding on the walk up but they've all come out the woodwork now. Oh, right, coming up on about half a mile now until I come off the canal. Um, and then I've got a couple of miles until I'm back home. So, I mean, this has been the first video. It's a bit of a learning curve, really. I think one of the things that I've learned is I'm, I'm most likely going to have to invest in a gimbal. Um, you know, the, the footage is quite shaky. Obviously, I'm walking, so it, <laughs> it really doesn't help. Um, so a couple of things that I've got coming up. So obviously I've got Spain at the end of the month, um, but I still need to do a fair amount of training before then. So I'm at least at minimum, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a walk along the Thames. So that's going to be a 60 mile trip where I start in near Slough, just south of Slough. Um, and then I follow the River Thames all the way down until the uh, barrier at the end. So what I'm going to be doing on that trip is I'm going to be doing that over two days, so 30 miles a day, uh, stopping at Twickenham or Richmond, somewhere in that sort of area. So I'm going to be filming that one, putting that one out. So <clears throat> it's a cliche, but don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, see that next video come out. Um, hopefully I will have the gimbal arranged by then, so the quality of the footage should be uh, significantly better. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I will film a little clip when I'm coming out of the fields and into the village. But yeah, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. It's home, I'm back in my village. So I'll be putting my feet up, having a good rest. And then back at it, as I say, it'll be in the next two weeks. I'll be going down to London, two day trip, 60 mile, 
Um, I'll record it as I say, I'm potentially I can't get a, a gimbal as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And as I say, if you can like it, that'd be great. Send it on to any of your friends. Thanks, bye-bye.